Neil. This week we're looking for the best shots from the Champion of Champions, which includes some of the most challenging shots we've seen all season. So to discover how difficult these shots really are to play, and to decide which of them is best, as usual we're going to be recreating all of them as accurately as possible, before playing them in the fewest possible attempts. And we're beginning with John Higgins, who's looking to finish off his match against Chris Wakelin and needs one more red to do so, and manages to get it with this impressive swerve. I found this was definitely a lot harder than it first looked, because you have to swerve quite a long way around the yellow, and getting that right was a lot more challenging than I first thought, as you have to strike a very precise part of the red. I was only expecting this to take me a couple of attempts, but the difficulty level being a lot higher than I was expecting cost me a lot of time here as just playing this shot gave me a whole new perspective on just how difficult it was. Next up we've got eventual tournament winner Mark Allen pulling out this long red off the bolt cushion. Now you may notice I'm doing things a little bit differently this week and everything's a little bit more simple and that's because unfortunately I've picked up a really nasty virus and I'm having to record and edit this video from a position I'm referring to as my deathbed. Luckily I managed to get all the shots recreated just in time before this happened including this nice long red and I was pretty happy to get this after just three attempts. Sean Murphy's giving himself a great chance in this frame here by potting the brown, getting in around the back of the reds and opening up the black spot. To play this shot I'm going to have to judge the left hand side I get on the cue ball perfectly and on my first attempt I just slightly overdid it which made the cue ball head towards the pink. I corrected this for my second attempt but didn't expect it to go more or less perfectly. Didn't quite open up the black but it was still pretty good. They're cannon on the black too cushion. As long as you get something, a piece of something, you've got a chance. Perfect. In the final, Judd Trump was able to keep this 100 break alive by playing this excellent cannon around two cushions, bringing the last red out over the pocket. This was a great shot from Judd, but it ended up being more or less the only thing to go right in the final, as he ended up getting annihilated by Mark Allen. Fortunately for me, however, this shot's very close to being a natural angle, and you just need a small amount of side spin to make it work. However, I slightly got it wrong after my first attempt, where I thought you had to hit it a little bit thinner to get the cannon, and I really needed to hit it thicker to get further up the table. When I eventually got it right, I was a lot closer again. So on my next attempt I just took a little bit of speed out of the shot and this made all the difference. Unfortunately the camera was steaming up a little bit but I realised it after this one. Before playing that shot, Judd was faced with this relatively awkward one and ended up getting the double. It does look relatively straightforward but I wanted to have a go at it anyway. So my first attempt was pretty disappointing as I completely misjudged the shot, but I got it on my second, however I missed the cannon on the green. And competing with that this week, we've got another Judd Trump double that started off his wonder clearance against Sean Murphy in the seventh frame. This shot's definitely a lot more controlled than the previous one as Judd manages to just about hold for the black. I had to drag this in and I was pretty happy to get it on my first attempt and really pleased that the white held up just about as well. So which was the cheekiest double? Well I thought the first shot was a lot more straightforward and gets three chilies, whereas the second shot was a lot more controlled. So it gets four chilies and is this week's winner. Now to the shot you've all been waiting for, or at least I hope you have, the shot that some people were saying was the greatest shot of the century. So now I can work out for myself how difficult it really is, and if it is really that good. To start off with, I couldn't quite reach the shot right-handed, and I don't really have the ability to play the shot left-handed, so I decided the best thing I could do was just to flip it. So it's the same shot, just mirrored. I'm playing it right-handed, but everything's on the opposite side of the table. It's relatively straightforward. However, the shot definitely isn't. 
Although I do have to point out exactly what it is about this shot that makes it challenging, because it's not necessarily what you might expect. Because the angle is more or less there to get the cannon, and because it balances itself out around two cushions, it doesn't really matter how much right hand side you put on the cue ball. The key to this shot was how wide you made it break using topspin. But the problem I really had with this shot was striking the red thin enough to push it over the pocket. I could get the cannon fairly comfortably on pr pretty much 50% of the shots, but it was just finding the right edge at the correct speed that made it really tough. And some of these shots were so incredibly close to being perfect, I was just a few millimetres out with the position of the cue ball when I cannoned the red. And mainly because of that, and pretty much just that, this is one of the hardest shots I've had to play in some time. And I ended up getting a little bit frustrated in the end because I kept hitting it mostly too thick. So I kept trying to make the cue ball break just a little bit wider, and I ended up making it break too wide on a number of occasions. And of course it's possible that I haven't quite got the position of the ball set up perfectly. Either way I still needed to catch the edge and I was pretty happy to finally get it because I've run out of things to say on this shot. Finally. <laughs> After how difficult the last shot was, I really don't know why we've moved on to this one next, but anyway, this was more of a fluke than anything else, and it's Mark Williams trying to keep the pink out of the pocket to stay in the tournament, but he also manages to get the snooker in behind the black at the same time. Now the main reason I'm trying this is because a few people asked me to have a go at it to see how difficult it really was. Now stupidly, I decided to play this left-handed rather than do what I did on the previous shot and flip the table around, which looking back at it would have made it a lot easier. I just thought because it was a fluke anyway it wouldn't make too much of a difference but playing it right handed would have made it a bit easier to find exactly the right spot to get the right reaction out of the jaws. Either way I ended up settling with this because that was about as good as I could do. Looking back on it now, Jimmy White had a really tough draw against eventual tournament winner Mark Allen and had to pull out shots like this one to even win a single frame. This is another shot that was a little bit harder for me because I'm right handed and this time it was because of the position of the black, however I was pretty happy to just about wriggle it in first attempt, although I don't know why all these shots are being played by left handed players. Another shot from Judd Trump now, this time where he finds himself in a lot of trouble against Barry Hawkins early on in the match, and he manages to just pot his way out of trouble. This is a really tough pot considering the position of the balls, and it's definitely not one I would have fancied, especially having to cue at quite an awkward angle over the side cushion. I did get this one fairly quickly, but the white ended up travelling up the table. I'm not really sure what I did wrong with the position of the balls here. Here's a really well cued shot from Mark Williams in his match against Robert Milkins. And as we've already seen, this match didn't really go so well for Mark after Rob made a couple of really crucial clearances. And here's another example of a shot in this video where I really struggled to line it up properly the first couple of times, and then for whatever reason just found the right angle. I'm not sure how this keeps happening, but I was pretty pleased to get this after just three attempts. John Higgins has got yet another awkward red to deal with over the pocket, but this time he can't even swerve it. However, he still comes off the cushion and manages to pot it. This needed a lot of right hand side to make the angle, and I was really caught out on my first attempt by just how far out I was with this shot. I didn't even hit the red off the second cushion. I heavily corrected it for my second attempt and would have potted it, but unfortunately I then hit the red too slowly, so I just needed a bit more pace, but could I keep the cue ball online at this speed? Thankfully, yes.
I'm surprisingly now we've got another Judd Trump shot and this was one of the first he played in the tournament podding the long red and stunning the cue ball across the table for the black. I knew I had to dig into the cue ball quite a bit with this one, but on my first attempt, not only was I wide, I didn't get enough backspin on the cue ball. I corrected this on my second attempt, although the cue ball ended up in an awkward position. This Gary Wilson shot was clever because he manages to escape out of a fairly basic snooker here and leave Sean Murphy in a snooker of his own. Sean Murphy did make quite an impressive hit on this but ended up leaving the green on which allowed Gary Wilson to go on and win the frame. The problem I had with this shot was the side reverses as it goes up the table if you play the shot too slowly and if you play it too hard the white goes in and out behind the brown. So I had to play it slowly and allow for the side to reverse which makes the cue ball move to the right as it slows down up the table and judging this was a real struggle. Eventually though I did get the speed and line right and I was pretty happy with the result. This was a key shot and a crucial clearance for Mark Allen that saw him took a 2-1 lead over Judd Trump in the final. This is a really difficult shot to play along the bolt cushion digging down and he manages to get excellent position on the pink. On my first attempt with this one I was just digging down at the cue ball a little bit too much because I was bridging over the cushion. My second attempt I managed to correct this quite well and I was pretty happy with the result. Now to the shot that won Jimmy the frame against Mark Allen, potting the last black off the spot from quite an awkward position. Jimmy had also potted quite a good pink to get in this position in the first place, and it's one I did expect to get first time, but unfortunately I just kept getting the angle wrong, and this took me a lot more attempts than I was expecting, even though it was only three, so not so good on this one. Ding managed to get 3-0 ahead of international championship winner Zhang Ander before Zhang pulled it all the way back to 3 all and looked like winning the deciding frame before Ding pulled off this excellent pot in the last pink and then potted the black. Which was impressive considering everything that happened up until that stage. The pot itself wasn't exactly easy. I had a little bit of difficulty finding where the pocket was, but once again picked up the line on my third attempt. However, the cue ball didn't quite come back in the right place, meaning I possibly didn't put the white in the right place to start off with. Either way, I also managed to pot the black, so it was good enough. This is about as close as Judd got to a comeback in the final as he potted this long red giving himself a chance to get back to 7-4. However that never happened and Mark Allen went on to win the match 10-3. Either way this is a really good pot and it's going to need a lot of backspin and right hand side to allow me to pot this and get the cue ball back into bulk. I was pretty happy to get it after just three attempts but the cue ball was nowhere near right. I needed to generate a lot more spin on the cue ball to get back into bulk and that did cause me to miss cue. So once again I was trying to pot a really awkward shot and spin the cue ball back towards bulk and unsurprisingly that went wrong quite a few times. In fact this was so awkward I just wished I stayed with the attempt from before where I didn't actually manage to screw the cue ball back very far because this was just going more and more wrong. Eventually I did pot it and I got a lot further back but still not into bulk. So for the results I'm giving third place to Mark Allen. With excellent queuing like this it's easy to see how he went on to win the tournament. Second place goes to Ding with this really crucial shot on the pink. After everything that happened during this match, this was a really tough shot and especially good considering he potted the black as well. 
Of course, I am giving first place to Judd Trump's shot, as it was simply better than anything else. However, it's possibly good for different reasons than you might expect. So unfortunately, that's a little bit more simplistic than normal, but hopefully I'll be out of bed by next week and we'll be back to making regular videos. And if you want to see two regular videos, have a look at these two that I made when I was still healthy. And remember, don't just watch play and make the commitment to becoming a better player by subscribing to the channel and visit the website. See you later.